The O.J. Simpson trial was followed by millions and covered by journalists here and around the world. Fox 11's Laura Diaz was one of them. She joins us live from a now infamous location with more tonight. Laura. Yes, you know, I'm in Brentwood near Mezzaluna. That is where Nicole ate her last meal. It's also where she left her glasses and where Ron worked. It's one of the many locations that I will never forget and countless other people agree with me. So today it was just a reminder of the pain that the families must be going through after almost 30 years, um, the, the, the loss, under those circumstances. It was LAPD Commander David Gascon who first signaled that this murder case was about to become a huge worldwide bombshell story. It came with these words a few days after Nicole and Ron's murders. The Los Angeles Police Department right now is actively searching for Mr. Simpson. And you made that announcement in the newsroom. There was a palpable gasp in a room where people are not shocked very often. The auditorium at Parker Center, as you recall, was packed, and uh, there was a gasp. And even though I was speaking, I said, boy, that is really something to hear all these hard-boiled uh, journalists uh, who've been through everything to all let out a gasp simultaneously like that. To jog my memory, as if I could ever forget, we drove to two infamous scenes related to the case. This is the location where the mutilated bodies of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman were discovered back in 1994. Nicole was living here at the time. Now the address has changed because they're trying to establish distance from the violent crimes that took place here. I can tell you at the time that prosecutors said that it was very, very random that Ron Goldman happened to be here at all. He was simply returning a pair of sunglasses to Nicole, which she had left at the restaurant where he worked as a waiter. On this site, on Rockingham, just a few miles away in Brentwood, sat O.J. Simpson's mansion. People stop by here all the time just to check out the location. So much so that years ago, the traffic department made a decision to make it an illegal left turn coming off of Sunset to try to discourage those ghoulish tourists. The infamous Bronco chase with O.J. eluding police became part of L.A. lore. As all of this happened, we kind of guessed he was going to go back home, and that's why we had uh, the SWAT team wait for him there. Of course, those of us who were working the story at the time, we worked 24-7, everyone trying to track down leads. I know that I was one of them, always working the phones at night, following what was happening in the case, and then later on in court. It was interesting today at lunch where a young member of my family, I talked to him, and I couldn't believe it. He's not quite 18 years old, and he told me he knew all about the OJ case. So I think that it was that confluence of culture and sports and crime that attracted people of all all backgrounds and all ages, and they saw the case through the prism through which they see life. Laura Diaz reporting live from Brentwood. Now, Alex and Marla, back to you. And race and sex and wealth and so many other things coming together, Laura Diaz. Thank you. You can follow our comprehensive coverage on OJ's death, both on air and online. Go to our website, foxla.com.